welcome one and all uh, to this course uh, integrated photonic devices and circuits myself uh, vijay krishna das and uh, professor in department of electrical engineering iit madras and uh, to introduce this course uh, i prefer to bring this uh, uh, particular uh, paper this a prop which uh, in which it was proposed uh, the subject the actual subject concept as an integrated optics and that was actually proposed by uh, uh, stuart e. miller and uh, he was working in bell lab and it was published first time in 1969 uh, in bell system technical journal so if you see this paper this is the abstract so what it says this paper outlines a proposal for a miniature form of laser beam circuitry it was actually it was inspired uh, by electronic integrated circuits integrated circuit so here it says that laser beam circuitry index of refraction that means refractive index changes of the order of 10 to the power minus 2 to 10 to the power minus 3 in a substrate such as glass allow guided laser beams of width near 10 micron. So, any refractive index change with a cross section of 10 microns in the order of 10 to the power minus 2 to 10 to the power minus 3 that can be in a glass substrate or any other material platform is can enable conceiving laser beam circuitry that was the first proposal and if you see that photolithographic techniques photolithography was well known that time for integrated electronic circuit may permit simultaneous construction of complex circuit patterns it is just completely it is the idea was borrowed from uh, electronic integrated circuit with a hope that one day this laser beam circuitry can replace the so called electronic integrated circuit to get different type of functionalities. So, so to continue that direction if you see how the transistor to integrated CMOS electronics evolved here is a view graph I have taken from uh, internet this is the website address if you see starting from 1970 to 2030 of course the transistors in invented in 1947 48 and then integrated circuits came later on and here it is just documented from 1970 to uh, 2020 and beyond now to 2021 so 2030 and so on it is just uh, projected here and the development of integrated circuit happened by increasing the number of transistor per chip so, if you see the number of transistor per chip in the y axis, so 10 to the power 3 means 1000, 10,000, 1 lakh, 1 million, and set 1 billion, 10 to the power 9. So, on today we see 2020, it was shown that different type of microprocessor integrated circuit, right? So, different name, model number it is shown and it is growing. They are actually uh, coming out of different factory, different industry foundries etcetera and it is about 1 billion to date 2020 and I, of course, I think uh, there is some part missing that some of the uh, high end integrated circuits that can have more than 10 billion transistor today. So, in this way it is growing and that was actually following a famous law so called uh, Moore's law. So, Moore's law according to the Moore's law every 18 months number of transistors will get doubled in a single chip so, that is the uh, prediction. However, if you see there was a specific uh, problem if you just continue like this that number of circuits uh, number of transistor if increases uh, per chip that means their dimension will be shrinked and once the dimension shrinks. Uh, they are connecting wires, electrical interconnect that dimension will shrink and eventually result into a bandwidth limitation. That is the reason uh, 
the different route was proposed and evolved. What is that? That all these transistors you can integrate vertically three dimensional. So, lower uh, layer you can have a transistor that is a gate source drain so called MOSFET transistors that can be used for microprocessor. All the computation, processing, everything can be done in this layer and then you can connect them to another layer where you can have another set of transistors which will be used for memory purpose. And then when you want to communicate transistor to transistor wherever electrical interconnect fails bandwidth limited that time what you do another set of transistor you use to convert electrical signal into optical signal and wherever necessary you can convert back optical signal into electrical signal. So, that is how actually optical signal so called electromagnetic wave in optical domain started to play a role in the development of integrated circuit CMOS electronics and overcoming interconnect bottleneck. How that is possible? You see now this interconnect optical interconnects of fiber optic communications it was a grand success long haul communication it has happened. But slowly slowly people are trying to look into the communication within the chip, chip to chip, rack to rack, system to system lower uh, short hole communication purpose people try to look for. So, that one can actually really overcome the electrical interconnect bottleneck bandwidth limitations speed etcetera. So, how that is possible? The proposal was well you can have a laser, laser you know light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation and then you can have optical modulator where this electrical signal from a electrical logic cell can be amplified controlled and then feed into a optical modulator where laser light will come and the electrical signal will be convert uh, convert into a optical signal. Now, this optical signal you can guide through a optical waveguide and you can use a photo detector you can convert back your electrical signal into optical signal sorry optical signal into electrical signal and then give back to uh, another electrical logic cell. So, in this way people are thinking about that uh, how to replace bandwidth limited inter electrical interconnect by optical interconnect which is actually unlimited bandwidth it is optical frequency you know unlimited bandwidth. So, so that was the uh, uh, thinking and research going on and then later on people thought of why not integrating co integrating electronics and photonics together using CMOS uh, process technology. Here is a model it is shown here. So, you can integrate uh, in a substrate on a chip you can have photo detector, you can have modulator, you can have transistor, you can have waveguide and waveguide devices and so on everything can be fabricated and they can be communicated wherever necessary with a metal interconnect via everything is there. And you can reconfigure the optical waveguide uh, in terms of some kind of microheater you can just a little bit tune the waveguide property by heating it. And you can also you can integrate laser source within the chip if not possible then you can use a external fiber you can bring laser light from the external source and uh, with a optical fiber you connect and on chip you can process control use it as a optical interconnect and then that is it you can do that. So, that is how it was a huge prospect uh, coming into picture in front of us and already it has started to show some. Uh, advantages. So, I just uh, pointed out I just wanted to highlight here that the industrial success of CMOS compatible integrated photonics since 2000, 2000 to, to 2020 last 20 years I mean to say during the research success in last two decades. Uh, so, high end product so called 100 Gbps transceivers was now uh, in the market is now in the market and it is marketed by Intel and uh, they, they, they could actually demonstrate this after 16 years of research how to integrate uh, this electronics and photonics together. So, that was uh, the research and technology development all those and that is how by 16 years of research you could get this thing.
and very recently uh, Cisco also demonstrated 400 Gbps transceiver and they are being they are actually uh, hugely used in uh, data centers you know data centers they are slowly slowly uh, uh, replacing copper wires with the help of short hole optical interconnects short hole optical fibers and also rack to rack communication and also they are moving chip to chip communication so that their energy consumption can be reduced and today if we see that uh, the so called CAGR that means compound annual growth rate of photonic integrated circuit is about 23.4 percent. So, that is actually computed based on the data available today in front of us. Today, the market integrated photonics market is about 1 billion and it is predicted that by 2025 in another 4 years it can go up to 3 billion industry. Okay. And not only this optical interconnect solutions. So, this CMOS compatible integrated photonics has a vast application areas. It is now explored in many other areas which can be useful in day to day life. So, here I just try to map where it can be useful particularly photonic integrated circuit that is being demonstrated using silicon photonics technology. Remember that the silicon photonics technology is CMOS compatible silicon photonics technology where there is a chance and you have an opportunity so that you can co-integrate electronics as well as photonics components. And using this technology you can actually demonstrate different type of integrated circuit for besides your optical interconnect and high performance computing you can imagine in about that reconfigurable high speed transceivers, reconfigurable high speed transceivers and advanced civil radar system and avionics, microwave photonics, lab on chip chemical and biochemical sensing. So, biosensing applications and of course, neural network and artificial intelligence for high performance computing once it is done you can develop for artificial intelligence and uh, robotics etcetera. And of course, 5G communication another application of microwave photonics and finally, you can think of and today's craze that quantum logic gates, quantum key distribution, quantum information processing, quantum signal process and whole lot of quantum photonics technology can be demonstrated by the use of CMOS electronics. So, all these things are actually vast area of application based on that we have actually uh, developed this course and uh, we want to uh, bring it in front of you uh, to give some kind of overview, some learning everything uh, for so that you can be uh, good have, you can have good knowledge in this particular huge hot area. Okay. So, uh, what are we going to learn in this course? So, in this course we will learn about. So, I said that the course name is integrated photonic devices and circuits. Ultimately, it is actually uh, leading towards the development of multifunctional photonic integrated circuits. So, called PICS here P I C S PICS photonic integrated circuits and system you can say. Okay. And so, we will try to give what all the components used for the demonstration of multifunctional photonic integrated circuits. And if we see that this type of circuits can be subdivided into two categories. One is integrated optics remember that 1969 the proposal of integrated optics. So, that integrated optics means waveguide optical waveguide related devices structures passive that can be divided into passive devices and active devices. Some of the devices you can fabricate and you can use like passively passive structures and some of them you can reconfigure that can be actually active devices we, call, we will call it active devices. And this basic component structures it is like a, a electronic circuit you know that transistor, resistor, inductor, capacitor they are used and here also some of the components called MMI multimode interferometer, directional coupler DC, micro ring resonators, magender interferometer 
distributed Bragg reflector. These are the basic few components I mentioned here. You, you will be learning in this course and they can be used as a passive devices like power dividers, wavelength filters, etcetera and also active devices like tunable filters, switches, modulators, so on. And another set of device required for uh, for an ideal photonic integrated circuits, they are actually optoelectronics. You know optoelectronics means it is the class of devices where actually you can uh, use uh, light source, you can use light source, light source basically it is laser diodes, uh, light emitting diodes etcetera where actually you have uh, you the principle basic principle is that electron loses energy and it emits electromagnetic wave or laser light right. So, that is kind of optoelectronics. So, uh, optics to electronics to optics and in the photo detectors you know optical signal can be converted back into your electrical signal. So, this is again optics to electro electronics. So, these thing when optics and electronics involves in a device that is actually optoelectronics. So, your photonic integrated circuits it, it is comprised of both integrated optics as well as optoelectronics. Okay. So, normal junction p n junction diodes and 3 pi heterostructures these are actually normally used and this uh, this is actually I just classified as a device light sources modulators photo detectors they can be developed using the optoelectronics devices. And uh, finally, you need to control to drive these active devices and optoelectronic devices by means of electronic diverse circuits. So, electronic driver circuit is also very much part of this uh, photonic integrated circuits. But since you know this electronic driver circuits you can have many other courses subjects are available we will not be covered that much. We will be mostly concentrated on how all these components starting from integrated optical devices to optoelectronic devices, passive active devices, optoelectronic devices that will be covered and we will be learning in this course. Hopefully, this is clear about this course. I hope you are going to enjoy this course. Thank you very much.